Okay, so now we would like to get uh, forward, get ahead with the next overview. So remember, we, we have not actually gone into the modalities uh, per se. So, we first uh, um, kind of understood, did a quick review on 2D signals and systems and uh, now what we would like to do is get this hang of image quality. What do we mean by that? Uh, you know, so far what we have talked about is a medical imaging system scores. The imaging system, the role, the overarching objective of an imaging system is to capture the 3D, inherent 3D distribution of some parameter and display a output. So, the output estimate should be as close as possible to the, the underlying 3D distribution of the uh, body with respect to mostly uh, structural and functional aspect of the physiology, right. So, now the question is, okay, so what is important? We need to understand, study about the system. So, when we have to study about the system, we already talked about system impulse response, right, kind of uh, helps us char characterize the system. But notice, what is the overall objective is to see inside the body for what? What is the purpose? The purpose is for the doctors, right, the physician practitioners, the radiologists to essentially use the information they get about the body when they see what is there inside, right, through the medical imaging system, the output that you get, right, the medical images, they have to make diagnosis, right, they have to make, based on that, they have to take some decisions, do, do they see an abnormal growth, is it normal, is it abnormal, is it, uh, you know, even if it is abnormal, is it uh, severe or is it early stage, right, so they can, they can, uh, and where, which part of the body, which organ is having a problem. So, all this they need to take out, infer, right. So, the importance of medical imaging system, even though from an engineering perspective, we, we will feel happy to see how this is transforming a, a 3D uh, distribution into an output image, the mathematics of it or the instrumentation of it or the physics of it. The real purpose, the real benefit of this imaging system is for clinical practice, right. And therefore, now comes the question. So, how do we want to argue about the image quality? The actual image quality when we talk about, does it allow the doctors to make, is the quality sufficient, is the image reliable for them to make some judgment, right? That's, so we need to have some uh, benchmark. So, we need to know if they say, okay, I am not able to infer from this, we should be able to know whether is it underlying that is the best you can get or there is a problem in the instrumentation or there is a problem in the signal processing or the problem in the display screen, right. All this how will you do? So, that means we need to be able to assess the image quality, right. When we talk about assess the image quality, we need to assess the image quality mostly from, from, from our perspective, mostly from how does this image, uh, imaging system capture the inherent dynamics of the distribution, inherent uh, you know ranges that are present in the 3D, right, on the input side. Is it able to faithfully, truthfully capture that much, right? So, we should have some tools to understand and assess this based on the imaging system. So, clearly this is a more, I would say, um, being a coursework kind of uh, lecture, I had to really be, try to be complete at the same time, give a, a, a big picture view. But the moment we say image quality, I know you all know examples, right? What do we mean by image quality? Oh, image quality, we know some of the metrics, right? When you buy a phone, cell phone, you always use the cell phone as an example because you may have a very good feel for it, right? When you buy it, you will say, oh, this gives a very good uh, quality image. You would have used these terms. You will say, oh, this gives good resolution. I can see different colors. I can see, you know, I took this photo of a butterfly and I can see some colors that are appearing very real, right? So, you know, you, you, you get the best contrast, right? I see even uh, uh, very high 
uh, signal to noise uh, image quality when you start you say see very little less less noise right you would have used these terms in fact some of the things like uh, 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 you know you would have also used you would have seen deep blurring motion deep blurring right options in your so you get these cameras in your cell phones that come with automatic uh, deep blurring all so you would have inherently have you probably have a feel for what is image quality and what are some of the terminologies or metrics that are used for it so what we will do here is kind of give a, a overview of what is the uh, 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 more structured organization of these terms right what does it capture what does it mean how do we use mathematics to describe this it's going to be very uh, modality agnostic meaning in this we will not really jump into any particular modality we will try to capture these terms terminologies and the meaning of it here when we get into individual modalities which i said will be self contained there we will contextualize this image quality metrics as to whether it is from the physics whether it is from the instrumentation specific physics specific instrumentation right all those things we will do so here it is going to be a a a kind of a, a modality agnostic terminologies and uh, concepts okay so it's going to be very quick uh, overview very touch and go like this is a concept this is what you probably heard before this is what we will try to do okay that is how it is going to be covered so so much for introduction so now i have said the answer so what are the image quality metrics that comes to your mind uh, resolution contrast right uh, those two probably come noise less noise signal to noise ratio if you are a little more careful right what else can you attribute or oh, artifacts right is there anything else that comes to your mind when we talk about image quality right if at least you were able to recall so much i think you are in a good shape okay so contrast resolution contrast resolution noise artifact ah there is this distortions so that that we will get um so we will try to establish what this mean and then when we go to modality specific then each of these uh, metrics we will again view it okay so distortion so there is a subtle difference between noise artifacts distortions subtle difference as in there is a difference that's why these are all different things but um you uh, unless you uh, make note of the minute difference all of them may seem under the same basket oh this is all corrupting the image for, so that the doctor is not able to see a feature he wants to see for example right so we'll we'll go one one uh, metric at a time now okay so let's start with the contrast uh before i mean just before we jump into it again i i mentioned it there are two aspects to it broadly we are interested in two aspects when we talk about image quality right all the metrics that we saw some of them are basically coming from physics oriented issues what do we mean by that is that there's a imaging system that produces a image output and we talked about the metrics right contrast resolution so this image quality metrics are affected right image rather the image quality metrics capture the effect of different physics oriented issues right so as an engineer as a medical imaging system say signal processing or instrumentation or biomedical engineer you will be interested you will be very comfortable in understanding the image quality from the perspective of how does the system perform in truly capturing accurately the underlying 3d distribution that might be your you know forte so image quality is important is captured for that reason right all the contrast signal to noise ratio artifact that we talked about all of that but there is also some task oriented issues what do we mean by task oriented issues ah now task task is what here biomedical doctor so he needs to find out whether there is a abnormal growth or not right so his interest is not in 
whether you report a full width half maximum to be 2.7 mm plus or minus 0.3 and our new algorithm you know uh, processing technique improves it by 5 percent right that may get you a paper right but then uh, what is the doctor interested the doctor is interested in knowing whether there is a tumor there or not whether he can confidently reliably say that this is a tumor and measure the tumor and then do prognosis say okay if this is small you can come back after 6 months if this is greater than this threshold you know you have to right away schedule a emergency surgery so he has to be able to make all these judgments so his image quality is not about only uh, your you know objective metrics or my contrast is minus 3.77 db better uh, you know so th that's fine but the image quality from a task oriented issues you cannot capture it like that you may have to capture it using different metrics so the contrast resolution noise distortion all this will be used we'll understand what it is all this will be used to understand the imaging system how does how well uh, imaging system does right so that is our major interest however we will also just highlight this issue so that you are receptive all these are connected okay because if you do a good imaging system which is able to underlay capture the underlying distribution well then the question comes whether it is clinically useful so the doctor wants to use that imaging modality to make some diagnosis right so he is more interested in sensitivity of the system imaging system or the specificity of the imaging system diagnostic accuracy of the imaging system that is what he is more interested in right so there are two broad aspects so understanding this image quality is very important not just understanding objectively be able to uh, come up with models so that we can tease out where the image quality if you want to increase increase the image quality you know we need to understand what are the factors that are contributing and work towards that or if this is the best then the doctors get, has to have to get trained to make use of the modality so it, it it's important from either perspective that you see okay so let's move on the first uh, image quality metric that we would like to understand is contrast so when i say contrast what comes to your mind how do you know this you I mean you've been using it in different contexts so contrast means what does it broadly try to the sense of what it conveys is or oh, there is a difference contrast means something is different different from what or oh, something i am looking at is different from the surrounding that's how you contrast out his idea was in contrast to somebody else right you use this in a different colloquial terms but each of the time when you carefully analyze you use this word to capture or make sense of how do you say one from apart one from the other how do you tease apart one from the other so the target from the background that is the context right so to put it in in in, in our perspective we'll say difference between image intensities of an object of interest to the surrounding object or background right very good so it it kind of not it is not too far away from what our colloquial use was it's just that we have changed it or made it little more specific to calling it as image intensities that is different of the object of interest and the surrounding okay so this is good with english how do we now how do we capture it see if you want to do any uh, understanding analysis and compare you need to have some mathematical language not english language right mathematical language so how do we capture it right why is that important the importance is because i'm going to show you an image which we saw already so qualitatively using this english descriptive language we may be able to appreciate it but in order to jump in and uh, really make a mathematical statement of it and then that can be used uh, subsequently because you know different modalities are there so we should have some quantitative way to do it right so qualitatively you may appreciate right this is the same image that we saw earlier um why did i put it here now we'll have to look at it from the contrast perspective you quickly recognize that 
for example, each modality has its own ability to contrast out a target from background. So, I have to define what is a target, I have to define what is a background. See, that is a, that is a, but when you look at the overall image, right, this is a CT scan of your head, this is MRI, the second is MRI, third is PET. Quickly, you will see each one is different, but the contrast in PET, right, especially of the regions, right, you see a blue region and yellow. So, there is a good contrast, even though it is color, I mean, even if you convert it to grayscale, one will be more towards white, the other will be more towards black or gray, grayish, right. So, you will see that this region is well contrasted out compared to, for example, the corresponding regions here, if you compare this with the surrounding, right. If you compare this with the surrounding, clearly this region to this region, you know, it is all the same gray level, right. It is all the same gray level. Whereas, if I take the same region here, oh, I can say, I can clearly see that as different regions, right. So, that means the contrast is inherently high in pit. So, what do we mean by all this? Oh, image intensities of an object of interest surrounding objects or background, right. That is what the difference between them is what is captured. So, clearly, Depending on the modality, there is a, a fundamental, see we, we, we did not really go in depth which we will, but we know here we are talking about radioactivity as the signal here we are talking about uh, uh, you know the nuclear magnetic resonance of your hydrogen, here we are talking about attenuation coefficient of the tissue to your x-ray energy, right, these are the inherent signals. So, what this tells is some modality there is a inherent contrast is better than the others, the capturing the inherent contrast is better than the others, okay. So, okay, it is fine, but how do I now say this mathematically, how do I put some equations and then use that metric and uh, kind of capture this qualitative assessment. Can we come up with that? Can we have a quantitative metric that captures uh, what we qualitatively observed, right? So, for that we would like to introduce the idea of modulation. Modulation means, modulate means usually variation, right. You modulate it means you vary, it is not at the same level. So, here what do we mean by modulation? Oh, I have signal should not be at, so when do you contrast? Oh, I have to have some intensities in the target, some, in, some other intensity in the background. Only if these two are different, I can, there is a question of contrast come into picture right. So, that means how different these should be. Oh, is there a more a structured way of creating different intensities the, in the image? It can be modulate the signal. So, the idea is, the idea of modulation is how do we get different intensities in the image? If we get different intensities in the image, then the idea of contrast, we can then pick which one to contrast from the which is our target, which is our background or we want to ca you know uh, talk about uh, local, global, how do we want, all that we can uh, go on. So, modulation from what we know already, right, can you think about some signals that can be used for this purpose, right. So, this is something that I would like for you to think right now. Did you see any image so far, any signal so far? I gave a clue, we saw an image. So, any signal so far, where you could think about the signal is changing in intensity, right, in an organized way. I mean, the previous slide also we saw intensities were different, but that is very, it is very difficult. It is a human brain with uh, inherent intensities of various pattern. Did we come up across any signal where the intensities were varying, but that we can write mathematically, right. Think about it. Keep that in mind. We will, maybe it will strike a bell once you read this. So, we are going to identify modulation of a function, right. We are going to capture the modulation in the function, right. You have a signal. We want to capture the modulation in the signal. That means it is varying. So, we want to ca capture this variation. How do we do? We can do it several way, but one of the easier way to do is, is capture this modulation through modulation function 
as f max minus f min by f max plus f min. What does that mean? It essentially means contrast we talked about difference right. So, f max minus f min means two intensity difference right. f max plus f min means so you can think about it as amplitude right amplitude difference f max minus f min or okay divided by the average okay. So, difference by average that is going to be your contrast right. So, that means if I have an image, if I have an image signal, so in that image if I have intensities that are changing, how do I capture the modulation in that image, so that I can capture the contrast right. Oh, I need to take contrasts difference, so I can take amplitude difference f max minus f min by f max plus f min ok. So, this is on the whole if I give give a function f of x comma y, I can capture the modulation in the function by this. If I capture the modulation, you get some sense that already contrast definition was difference between two intensities compared to the surrounding or background. So, you can start to think that this modulation if you capture this, this has to do with contrast ok. So, that means can we cleverly uh, define a signal where we could capture this modulation from what we have done so far you should be able to recognize f of x y is a function we used sinusoids right vertical bar at an angle remember that is your intensity there was a black white black we spent some time on that capturing the frequency of oscillations right. So, that is a test signal where the intensity is varying in a known fashion known as in mathematically you can write it as a sinusoid at certain frequency. Of course, just for simplicity we have used only one variation f of x comma y is only having x we know how to write in y also right. So, when we showed the examples of u naught and v naught right is the same it is a it is a signal where the intensity is varying in one direction or the other or you can it can be at a slant. So, it can varies in both the direction just for simplicity we are taking a sinusoid at one frequency. So, now you understand ah, if this is a test signal where the intensities are varying how do I capture the contrast in this first we can understand what is modulation function. So, from this what is the modulation function for this oh go by the definition f max minus f min by f max plus f min. So, maximum is sinusoid is 1 minimum is sinusoid is minus 1 ok. So, you can already think about reducing this to f max and f min is going to be determined by the sinusoids plus 1 or minus 1 value and then you have a and b. So, you can get <clears throat> right. So, you can essentially get modulation function to be b by a. So, this is your modulation function ok. How much the background right, how much the difference is standing out, how much your target is standing out from the background. Here we did not specifically talk about one particular target I mean of course, we are taking the difference the maximum difference f max minus f min is the maximum variation. So, that is the maximum contrast you are looking at. So, that is what we have captured here b by a ok. So, far so good right, but this is not sufficient why because our interest is not just ok this is a good concept to use model this captures some uh, underlying I mean we, we can capture the contrast idea in this, but our interest is not just that our interest is how does the imaging system perform right. So, what is just before we uh, go to the next question just to have some visual representation and understanding m of equal to 0 what does that mean oh b by a is 0 ok m of is 0 means difference is 0 the numerator is 0 ok 
that means f max is same as f min there is no variation so there is no variation you see the image oh all of them are the same value right so if mf equal to 0 means the modulation function is 0 that means there is no modulation if there is no modulation uh, you you're not going to have contrast whereas if i have mf is equal to 0.2 or 0.5 or equal to 1 you slowly but steadily appreciate oh the bar, right the values are becoming so here the contrast is very high so there is a region where there is a thick black that dies down to gray and then there is a white right i can say i can see the bars much better so this is having a higher contrast so clearly this qualitative impression of the last one being a better contrast compared to this one this one is also captured by mf so mf is always right 0 to 1 here in this proposition we have taken uh, f min can be non negative right? if that's the case then you can actually get a sense that this is from 0 to 1 1 being the best possible contrast 0 being no contrast okay okay so we understand that this mf can be used to capture the contrast now what is our interest our interest is imaging system so i have a inherent contrast so i can present the input with maximum contrast for example my interest in the system is can it preserve can it transfer that can it show the output image which the doctor is going to use does it have that is how much of contrast is there in that image so there is an input there is a system there is an output so this test signal the mf is definitely good to capture the sense of underlying contrast variation now we would like to see how much of this contrast that goes into the imaging system comes out can we use this mf idea to understand about what is the contrast in the output image when the contrast is a certain contrast is sent into the in input image uh, input data so what does the system do to this contrast ideally you would have the system to pass whatever inherent contrast is there it should pass it on to the output image because that's where the doctor is going to be using it okay so let's take a imaging system a simplified imaging system lsi linear shift invariate system so you are presenting it with a input same input that we just saw the modulation function so now i know my input right which is a very well defined function for which i know my m suffix f i can calculate the inherent modulation that is there okay so now we want to understand what will be your output modulation so if you send this through the system if it is lsi by this time you should be able to write down the output this is f of x comma y use the variable h for your system to get output we will write in terms of g of x comma y right can you write down what will be the output when you pass this input through a lsi imaging system we did this last class right linear systems theory convolution in time domain or product in frequency domain we talked about fourier transform transfer function right we already see some frequency here so transfer function remember how much of the input frequency is captured the fourier transform we did so it right in the in the uh, frequency uh, domain right we can tease the signal out decompose it in terms of its frequency composition so now i am presenting u not so it's a frequency input how do i write the output g of x comma y right so i can use my transfer function so i can write g of x y a is some amplitude with zero frequency so the response of the system at 0 comma 0 and your response of the system to u naught comma 0 so you have only uh, x direction frequency 
right so your b is your amplitude and then the system how does it transfer the frequency content of u not in the x direction right capital h is your transfer function of your system okay so if this is the case i have my f of x y i have my g of x comma y what is now of interest to us oh we are not just interested in writing this equation this we know from the signals and systems linear theory that we studied our interest now is to see how does the contrast in the in input come out in the output that means my m suffix f i know right what is m suffix g write down what is m suffix g you know m suffix f right we did that in the previous slide b by a what is your m suffix g same definition maximum right f max minus f min by f max plus f min here g max minus g min by g max plus g min what is the value can you write okay g max is this guy because sin will be maximum and g min will be sin will be negative 1 so straight forward so now our interest is getting m suffix g m suffix g turns out to be if you do the g max minus g min by g max plus g min m suffix g will come out to be like this immediately here you can recognize b by a from previous slide we know is from the input m suffix f ah now you see there is a output m suffix g modulation in the output is nothing but modulation in the input times something to do with the system response correct clearly whatever the system response is you can you can observe even here your output is also going to be sinusoidal so the input fluctuation was sinusoidal the output is also sinusoidal no issues about that correct but the contrast that is there in the fluctuation in the in the, in the oscillations in the input is it preserved in the output well it is preserved depending on the system's response right typically you don't get this to be one so your mg will usually be less than your mf clear so mg will be usually less than your mf so even though they are having the same oscillation same frequency right the contrast in the output image can be from this can be inferred to be less than what you will be at the input because of the properties of the system okay so in, in that way we can define your modulation transfer function transfer function you know now we are talking about modulation transfer function what does it mean there is a inherent modulation m suffix f in that input side the modulation at the output side is m suffix g how much of this modulation is transferred from the input side to the output side that is your modulation transfer function of course it is dependent on the frequency so modulation transfer function depends on the frequency so it's a function of frequency is equal to your mg by mf or this guy right so now the if you want to talk about the contrast that you see on the image that the doctor is going to use you can clearly tell there is a influence of the system so there is a inherent so if there is no inherent variation then no matter which system you are going to use you are not going to see anything at the output right if this shirt is of the same color right now it's of the same color right no matter what if this entire shirt is the same color whether the pocket is there or not you won't be able to make out right if i inherently a change oh so if i keep a pen this pointer here which is of a different color now suddenly that is the inherent contrast the camera can capture and say oh maybe there is something so he is keeping his pen there if there is no pen right if if the whole shirt is the same color 
the pocket is also of the same color there is no inherent contrast no matter which uh, imaging system i am going to use i am not going to see a, a a pocket if it is well done maybe there are shadows or other things you can make out but the point is inherent contrast is important okay so if there is inherent contrast does this image so if i keep a pen here right and you don't see anything then there is a problem in the imaging system okay so the idea of this modulation transfer function is if there is a contrast in the input side does it come out on the imaging the, the image that is going to be used in the practice right so how does it capture how does the system transfer this input inherent contrast to the output that is what this is useful so <coughs> let's take a example so we can clearly talk about this modulation transfer function right is a uh, quantifies the degradation of contrast as a function of spatial frequency that is what we saw right so typically like i said it is going to be between 0 and 1 so 0 uh, and 1 so it, this is zero frequency what is zero frequency dc there is no oscillation so there is no contrast so if there is no inherent contrast right that you present in the output will also be no contrast so that may you can say the system is transferred there is no you, you know lo there is no loose in contrast why or oh, there was no contrast in the first place that you sent through the system so nothing to lose so you get the maximum uh, uh, you know throughput okay so mtf of 0 so typically your mtf at any given frequency is going to be in between 0 and 1 we saw this already right not mtf we saw the modulation function what happens if it is from 0 to 1 you if that goes in your output also has the similar pattern but then how much is transferred is captured by mtf okay so how do we uh, do this let's take a example case right so this is what is a plot of a mtf so we talked about mtf being a function of frequency so frequency in our context is going to be spatial frequency we have taken the variation in x direction has to be a spatial frequency so spatial frequency is denoted by inverse of length scale remember so spatial frequency versus mtf is plotted so you start out at one there is no variation dc value you get maximum transfer and then as the frequency increases this drops down so what does it say it looks very similar to you would have known this right very similar to your okay as a low pass filter right so this is frequency this is the response so after certain point right or oh, here for example after point 6 so if the frequency of that oscillation the black to white to black to white to black right the oscillations in the thing if it gets faster than point 6 uh millimeter inverse already i see drop of 50% of the value that means whatever was the maximum value that right maximum minimum we are subtracting to get the contrast you can already tell the mtf is only 50.5 so that means the contrast has dropped and when you move further after point 8 so if there is a variation in this black to white to white to black if it the variation is more than 0.1 per millimeter then i don't get any modulation at the output so if i send my input has a frequency that is greater than 0.8 right the output i won't have the f of x comma y can if it has greater than 0.8 the output g of x comma y is not going to have anything there is not going to be that oscillation that you see right so this is very important that means what would you desire this mtf to be the mtf should be oh you want it to be all pass right why because the higher frequencies remember we did one example case of just to get this idea of uh, uh, frequency that we did we had a, a scale a sagittal view of your uh, head right and then 
we had the spectrum this was when we did the 2d fourier transform and i showed you the example as to how you can make sense in the spatial domain as this is the head nose brain whereas in the spectrum you have a bright spot at the center 0 comma 0 and then you have you know it's just scattered all over the place recall that what did we do there oh we try to reduce the higher frequency the through the higher frequencies and then there was an effect in the image what was that effect we talked about blurriness right remember recall so here is similar if i increase my frequency more then the contrast is going down that means uh, the fluctuations are coming down the oscillations i don't see it so in fact after a certain point i don't see so i might give a oscillatory input but my output is going to be a dc value zero value from a contrast modulation function point of view right so there is a relationship so ideally you would like this mtf to be as high as possible for as many frequencies as possible because that's when you see greater detail that's what we talked about earlier okay so that means uh, this can be used this mtf can be used to study the different imaging systems correct or even within the imaging system what space you know you can change various parameters and see its effect on the image quality in terms of contrast so for example a imaging system is given and following mtf characteristics is what is obtained so we say oh this is imaging system 1 this is imaging system 2 this is imaging system 3 let's make it simple all of them are the same modality all of them are otherwise very similar it's operating on the same i mean it's capturing the same target image but this is the response you get from the three system configurations then what would you infer what would you comment on this well going by what we discussed all of them are having high value at zero right so okay <laughs> all of them are equally good if you want to send an image where there is no oscillations a homogeneous image all of them will perform well but if you look at the other interpretation oh this is frequency and this is falling off i would like to have as high a value as possible for as much frequency as possible that is my best case scenario so if you look at it here clearly oh this is broad this is wide here narrow narrower and it falls down it still has some value here whereas the corresponding location say if you take the second line here right it is mtf is some value whereas if i take the second line here the mtf is clearly lower than this value if i take the second one it's already zero so that means there is no, no transfer happening at earlier frequencies itself so you would expect that this is higher contrast uh, th this will provide higher contrast compared to this compared to this so this is in some decreasing order of contrast capability of that system so if you look at it in the image right so decreasing contrast we look at it the image what is the effect of that right so we present the same input but the three different systems configuration is here this is the output that you see what is the effect oh decrease in contrast when we say decrease in contrast you look at it not just decrease oh you can understand oh this is decrease in contrast mtf is low and i can qualitatively say that oh this is of better quality than this and this is the poorest amongst the three and the fluctuation between white and black right what we are capturing here is for all frequencies right so on the whole the image if you look this has a better contrast than this than this right but what you should recognize also is ah when the frequency higher frequency content reduced the image starts to look blurry this is something that we saw with the head scan as well so there is going to be some relationship between your resolution and contrast but here you can clearly appreciate using mtf if the mtf is falling off like this 
right how does it how does it uh, capture the image contrast quality of the image global right i just said the contrast of this image this is global so this captures the contrast transfer ability of the imaging system so when you give an image input or inherent uh, contrast distribution how much of it comes through at the output that is what this mtf is capture so you can extend this right you can extend this to uh, arbitrary frequency i mean just use the u but this can also be written h of u comma v instead of just uh, example that we took so the very handy thing we will work about when we get to the each of the modality we will try to put meaning to that capital h right what is it what is the physics how does that h get affected because of the physics of the modality and therefore how does the contrast get affected because of the physics of the modality or the instrumentation of the modality right or the signal processing aspect of the modality we will go one one at a time when we get to independent uh, modalities individual modalities okay so um, that is good that is for global contrast but uh, sometimes we may not be not all the time we are just looking at uh, engineering perspective and say oh we got a uh, good uh, you know i have calibrated the system this system has the best uh, mtf it, that might be true at the global scale but the doctor is probably not interested in the global view of it he is interested in actually looking at a, a particular location where he wants to see if there is a, a tumor growth at a early stage or how much is it grown right or can he demark demarcate where it is ending so that he can go into a surgery and remove that so the interest is not global imaging system the, the characteristics can you have a local contrast can you see the target that he wants to see how well can you see it corresponding to the immediate background he is not interested in seeing in the same frame different objects with different contrast he is interested in looking at a particular object in its surrounding neighborhood so he is not interested in putting all the dynamic range into one image okay he wants to see local target so then what do we do so then we can essentially use the same thing you have uh, for simplicity it is plotted through x the same concept you can extend it to y so you have a image intensities so you can take that function you have a target value and a background value so what is the contrast a oh, contrast is going to be difference between how much this stands out compared to the background how much the intensity in the target stands out compared to the background that is your local right so how was so here you can say this is so intuitively speaking if i want to do, uh, uh, say uh, if i can see whether this stands out compared to the background it is easier if ft is much larger than fp if ft comes smaller and smaller right right smaller and smaller at one location probably the difference between ft and fb is not much so it's not standing out so in some sense the contrast is poor it's very difficult to spot where is the target what is the background so inherently contrast we talked about difference between the intensities in the target and background if that is already high that is inherently high that is good but then your imaging system should transfer that so imaging system cannot take the black one as the input and given output g of b and g of t for example that has a profile like this right so if the input is f and g is your uh, output in red color if your mtf is such that it takes the black and produces the red you know it's a very poor imaging because the doctor is now has to differentiate the small difference he has to make sure oh this is the target this is the background based on the small uh, difference between target and background so it might not be that obvious to uh, reliable okay so uh, that means you can calculate your local contrast as ft minus fb by fb just normalizing right 
So, F t minus F b by F b. So, this again we will end up using this is again depends on the context ok depending on the context one metric over the other can be used. So, if you are dealing with something specific you want to then uh, your local contrast might come into uh, a rescue you may want to use this to capture that. If you are just interested in the characterizing the system then maybe MTF is a better tool ok. So, let us uh, stop here right with contrast, but uh, uh, before we do this I would like for you to do some thought ex exercise. I do not know how well it will come because in class in a live class usually we sit in a classroom and I, I have the ability to switch on the light and switch off the light ok. So, what I am going to do now is I will try here, but perhaps you could try it at home also and convince yourself what is going to happen. So, the question is what happens if constant intensity is added to all the pixels. So, I have an image f right and I have a contrast that I am exploiting local target there is a target there is a background. What happens if constant intensity is added to all the pixels mathematically I know you I mean you, you should do it you will see, but intuitively what do you expect to happen right. So, for example, I am going to try this I do not know how well it is going to come. So, there is a there is a and this is an assumption that uh, because they are going to process this video and they are going to do some contrast enhancement equalization what not. So, maybe it does not come out that well. So, if you do not see much effect here maybe you should try it on your own. So, notice that I have a contrast between my skin color and my shirt right. So, this is my image of interest f of x y is capturing this this part. So, now the question is what happens if I add constant intensity to all the pixels what will happen to the contrast ok. So, I will just try and perhaps you can do it. So, I am what I am trying to do is trying to add uh, intensities by having a ok torch. So, I am I am putting more light both in the background and target. Now, what happened to the contrast right? I have captured the contrast as F t minus F b by F b. My shirt is my target, background is my skin color ok. So, now if I add if I add light I am adding white light both in the target and in the background. What happens to the contrast ok. So, please think about it try to do that and see whether you are able to appreciate how these metrics capture and what happens to the interpretation. Thank you.